humbled and honored to be standing with you today in this quest to change the world. Uh, I've been working at this a while as an adult and have had some success, uh, but it's so exciting to see students taking action. Um, when Jack sent me the first email to ask me about the possibility of coming to share some things with you today and uh, what we've been working on, um, I started doing some research and read your proclamation that you had written last year. And I thought to myself, this is, I'm a colonist in the 1770s, and I'm reading or hearing about this Declaration of Independence. Those folks wrote a document that changed the world forever. And I literally think that your proclamation and this student group can do the same. The proclamation was bold, confident, seeking solutions, and most importantly, it's the truth about the state of education today and where we need to get to. And we cannot do that without having your voice in the room. So my goals today in my short time with you are to get you to think, dream a little bit, maybe think about some compassion that you haven't had a chance to do uh, recently, and really commit at the end to taking action, to being awesome. And you're already awesome because you took a Saturday out of your uh, lives and you, you're 200 of about 470,000 students in the state of Iowa who chose to be at Waukee High School today. So you're already awesome, but if we don't take action, and as Ian and Jack were telling about the EdCamp sessions, if we don't make a plan of action, it's just gonna be another nice day where maybe you meet a prom date or somebody you can follow on Instagram, right? So we wanna make sure that the, uh, this leads to something because I'm so hopeful for what you've done. This quote was the motto in my classroom 27 years ago when I started teaching seven through 12 social studies in Northwest Iowa. If a man is to be called a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. So I didn't know what that meant 27 years ago. I didn't realize it was gonna turn into this whole industry of passion-based learning. I just knew that if we were able to push and encourage and support kids, to work hard at something, whether they chose it or it was chosen for them by destiny, not because we had to settle for one reason or another, that you would have a great life. And so I spent the last 27 years trying to make this come alive. I often follow this up in my classroom with comments like, if you're gonna be a gas pumper, be sure that by the end of the year you own the station and in 10 years you've got 12 stations. Dating myself a little bit, because nobody pumps gas anymore for others, but they used to do that, kids, really. It was awesome. You'd drive up and somebody came out and put gas in your car. I also said, if you're gonna flip burgers, because I did that when I was in high school, I worked at McDonald's for a very short period of time until I had to quit over a baseball scheduling issue. Um, if you're gonna flip burgers, then be thinking about what that franchise language is gonna be. Because if you're just there to flip burgers and you're not there to take over the world, then I'm not sure we're gonna get out what we should. Or we're not gonna leave the legacy that we could. So you're gonna learn a little bit more about me today, but I do wanna very quickly find out who's in the room. So I've got some statements up here on the overhead and if the statement pertains to you and you feel moved to stand up, please do. And then sit back down very quickly so we can get through them. If it's a little personal, because the last, the first ones are kind of not personal, then it gets a little personal, so if you don't feel comfortable, uh, please don't uh, feel like you have to stand up and let people know something about you that they might not know. But not only am I going to get a chance to maybe make some connections with you th during my comments this morning, I want other students to see that people are just like us. Sometimes we think they aren't. When I was a divorced parent kid in 1981, I was one of 65 kids, two of 65 kids in my graduating class that had divorced parents. Two of 65. And if you think about your friends, so I'm going to ask about, you know, who you live with. But again, if you don't feel comfortable standing up, please don't. So these guys kind of started up, but if you live more than an hour away from Waukee High School, stand up. 
Fantastic. Sit down. And you can do that on your own. I don't need to tell you. Participate in school-sponsored activities. Is that you? Anything. Awesome. Have a part-time job. I should have said stand up until one doesn't pertain to you, maybe, for some reason. Okay, thanks. Lots of kids working. How about from Grinnell? I got to give a little shout out to Superintendent Abrahamson. We were just working together yesterday, so I said I was going to do that. So you can tell him I actually did. Uh, or an avid technology user. Now wait, wait, hold on. If you're like my Chloe, who's 16 and a sophomore, and we have some Manson Northwest Webster folks in the house, which makes it a little interesting. I got to be careful what I say about my kids, I guess. Um, who uses Instagram like every two seconds. I'm not counting her as an avid technology user. I'm counting her as somebody who can't stand not to look at her face for four seconds, right? So if you're an avid technology user, stand up. Wow. Awesome. Okay, live with two biological parents. Do you live with two biological parents? And again, if you feel comfortable. So a little more than half, but... Okay, but again, they're with you. Know someone who's dropped out of school either physically or mentally. Yikes. They say the graduation rate, the dropout rate in Iowa is in the 10 to 15%, depending on what uh, statistics you're using. And I just saw about 85% of the people stand up. So the problem in Iowa is we're so darn compliant. And I may talk a little bit about you know, civil disobedience and questioning everything, because I think that's really important. But I think we have way too many kids in Iowa who have dropped out, but haven't left the building. And I'm not saying I want them to leave the building, but I'm saying I want us as educators to engage you or them at much higher levels. And finally, who really, really wants to change the world? Please stand. All right, have a seat. Thank you for humoring me. You got a good idea, and you got a little exercise in your lives there. Because I think, again, it's really important to think about who really wants to change the world and who's kind of interested. It's kind of the commitment and interest thing with the pig and the chicken, right? The chicken is interested in providing something towards the breakfast, and the pig is committed, right? That'll sink in later, I promise. <laughs> All right, so uh, a little bit more about me personally, and those are my fantastic six children, uh, but I became an educator because of the adults in my life. My parents were both teachers. My dad taught high school science for 38 years. My mom taught for about five years PE uh, until her mental illness that she struggled with for all about 72 years of her life before she passed four years ago led to her application, which was burning bridges. You can laugh. Because she's looking down right now and thinking, because I prayed a lot about this, and I said, Mom, I'm going to talk about you a little bit. Because her mental illness, which nobody could really see, impacted my life for the 40 year, 40-some 40 years that we were together. And some of you, some of your friends are dealing with those same issues that somebody can't see. My parents both had their master's degrees. Both parents were teachers. And until they got divorced in ninth grade, I lived in a very difficult home. Every night going to bed crying because my parents were yelling at each other. So they led me to where I am as an educator. I had an eighth grade teacher that told me in the front of class when I said I wanted to be a football player. He said, you're too fat to do anything, let alone play football. Yeah. It's, it, it's awesome now because I ended up playing college, small college football at Northwestern, and every day I went to practice to the weight room, to our off-season conditioning days that were just miserable. I thought I had this teacher's picture in my head. One more rep for Mr. Doofus. <laughs> and then my high school basketball coaches who took me under their wing when they knew things weren't really going well and taught me that there, you could be part of something bigger than myself, and this great team that I belong to, and they just pushed the heck out of me, and I respect them so much for doing that. So they helped me become educators. Now I want to change the world because of the young people that I know. These six, from left to right, Sophie, the kind and caring eighth grade twin, 
really soft-hearted. Gabby the artist, Spencer the software developer, he lives just down the street in a new house him and his wife just built. He's been at Waukee High School, I think working with Hyperstream and done some things with Michelle and is at your elementary middle school doing some coding stuff. He's a computer geek that's gonna employ a lot of other computer geeks, by the way, and make a lot of money. Uh, Tucker is a fanatic about exercise and wellness. He's a junior at Southwest Minnesota State, wants to be a strength and conditioning coach in college. Chloe, the cute little one there, is a sophomore, you know, 16 going on 28. And she loves everything. She's trying to figure out what she wants to do. So I've got to, got to expand my horizon and say, what can Chloe do that will make a difference in this world? And then Ellie is 19, she's a freshman and starts her college basketball career tomorrow at UNI. She got a basketball scholarship, so when people ask me what she's gonna study, and I say she doesn't, I don't know, because she doesn't know, but I don't care, because somebody else is paying for it, it's kind of fun, <laughs> right? So that's why I wanna change the world, because I was hoping to get it done before they were out of school. My goal has shifted a little bit to their kids. I'm a little bit disappointed about that. So the world has changed in many ways, and it's kind of scary and awesome all at the same time, right? Because of this fact right here. Nobody really cares what you know. Because, you know, you can Google it, you can use this app called Photo Math and get math problems done. It's a way my eighth graders, I think, are gonna succeed from Algebra One. Um, it really does matter what you can do with stuff. And so we've got so many people, a lot of educators especially, that know some stuff but they've never left the classroom. They've never been in the real world which they say we're preparing, and it's not a negative on them, it's just that when we talk about preparing kids for a world, I'd like us all to have lived it. Jokes are going, okay. <laughs> so again, it's a scary world and we're trying to fix it. So look at these things that we're asking you to do in the future, and as I was thinking about this past week as I was trying to get ready, I was thinking, the future, this is what I'm asking our employees, we have about 250 at Prairie Lakes, to do right now. I'm asking them to be virtual collaborators. We cover 8,000 square miles. If you think you're gonna get together and plan with your tech integration team, which Aaron Olson is a member of, or meet with the second grade team in Esterville when you office out of Pocahontas, that's not gonna happen. So get with it. Use Zoom, use Skype, use whatever you need to do, but you're not gonna get there. Social intelligence, ability to connect to others in a deep and direct way to sense and stimulate reactions and desired reactions. People, adults oftentimes want to bash us, young people and people who use technology that, oh, that's not real communication. I have great friends that I met on Twitter and I've never been with them before and now when I have met them, it's like we're, you know, blood brothers or sisters. So the world has changed and what are we doing about it? So you have to be the ones to change it because we adults have screwed it up for a long time. So the power of this group is that you are the ones that can make it, it's your future, not mine. So all these things are going on and I'm not even gonna read them because I had to keep moving here, but you need lots of things are going on. And how about education? If you look at the things that are going on in education, we say we want students engaged, the statistic 44%, I think that's way too high. I'm in classrooms every week, observing, doing instructional rounds, visits, and helping, you know, try to coach and provide feedback. I don't see 44% of kids engaged at high levels. I see them on task doing stuff the teachers ask because we're compliant like that in Iowa, right? And teachers, adults in the room, you're glad of it. You live in Detroit where the graduation rate is 28% or Camden, New Jersey, where the graduation is 13%. Those kids just walk out. They're not coming back. But is instruction different? I don't know. I've been in schools in other states and I haven't, I've seen instruction that's been at pretty low levels. Asking kids to recall, list, name, match. Ellie, in an international relations class a couple weeks ago, you and I, labeled 34 countries on a European map. In an international relations class at a university in the state of Iowa, she labeled 34 countries on a map of Europe. Now she got them all right because she's a, she's a four point student that hates to do projects and hates me talking about thinking and that, like this kind of stuff. Uh, so she can regurgitate that stuff, but I don't know what she's gonna do for a living. Because there's no map labelers, are there? I keep thinking, is that gonna be a job? Man, I hope 
so because she's going to be awesome <laughs> and get out of my basement, right? <clears throat> so this happened, uh, you know, it's, it was on Twitter a couple weeks ago, and some of you may have read the article about this teacher that became an instructional coach, and she followed two students in her building um, for a day. And these are her takeaways. Students sit all day, sitting and exhausting. High school students are sitting and passively listening during approximately 90% of the classes. You feel a little bit like a nuisance all day long. That was her take. She said it was miserable. She followed two, just a sophomore and a senior for a full day. And sometimes administrators, if you're in here, we pop in for three minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, and we see one thing and we can go back and do something engaging. But think about the kid that's going first period, second period. This isn't a bash on teachers. This is a bash on our system that hasn't supported teachers and administrators to make those changes. Because until we engage kids with their brains, we're not going to have somebody that's going to cure cancer. Not going to happen. We're not going to put an end to racial conflict in the United States of America in 2014. Like that's happening one state away in Missouri. So we've got to get to it. So do you agree or disagree with Miss Wiggins' takeaways? If you agree, put your hand up right now that those things happen on a regular basis. Okay. Interesting. I was working with the district the other day and trying to improve instruction and give them some feedback. And a third grader said this to the principal in in-school suspension this week. You know, Miss. You know, Principal Smith, that's not the real name. I really like doing this kind of assignment because I get to look at all the other stuff in the magazines while I'm trying to find my words. But honestly, this kind of stuff has absolutely no educational value. It's a ploy that teachers try to use and trick us into thinking it's a fun way of learning our spelling words and they actually think we're too dumb to know it's really just busy work. This is third grader word for word. I'm not kidding. Discipline problem, tag off the chart. On the spectrum, probably Asperger's autism somewhere. <laughs> but said that to the principal while he's in the school suspension because he's looking through this magazine trying to find these vocab words. Is that awesome? And sad at the same time? Now again, teacher didn't wake up and say, you know what, I think I'm gonna do some busy work today. Right? They want to do the best they can, but our system, we administrators, because I'm one of them, been one for the last 20 years, haven't done a good enough job supporting to figure out what this change. And then we gotta talk about parents, right? Because parents are still wanting a better education, I just tweeted this yesterday, if you follow me, at her six kids, and I hope I have lots more followers, because I'm just burying my children in the Twitter account. It's awesome. Now they're not using it, because they're on Instagram and whatever. Uh, but I tweeted out, everybody wants parents, wants school to be better than theirs, but not different than theirs. You know, you think about standards-based grading. Is that happening anywhere close by the school I'm standing in right now? The pushback from parents about, oh my God, we can't change grading, right? <laughs> Half time? It's happening. It's happening. Somebody's got to give me the five minute thing too, if somebody could, because I might lost my clock. So, Ian, will you do that? Thank you. We had the big picture learning folks come in. They run 200 schools across the country. We had them in the Storm Lake a week ago to talk to leaders in the state, teachers, administrators, community members about what the big picture learning school looks like. And I'm gonna show you in just a minute, but this is one of the comments they made. There was a study done that said there are more restrictions on 12 to 18 year olds than on prisoners and soldier Marines. So we actually have more requirements, restrictions around access, movement, in most of our schools than those two things. That scares me a little bit if we're trying to get a different result. A little bit interactive here, and I was gonna use poll everywhere, and it's one of those things I couldn't get it to work, and the internet was really driving me nuts, so I'm just gonna have you shout it out, and I do want you to participate. What's one thing you wish were different in your school? Without naming names, what's one thing you wish were different? Anybody? Tech usage. Tech usage. You wish there was less of it? Oh, tech usage, more of it in an appropriate way, not sitting soon in front of the computer. What else? Open campus. You want it or you want it closed? Okay, you want it. How are we going to be responsible when I go to college if I don't know how to manage my time as a senior in high school? What else? Makerspace. Makerspace. Let's get it. Let's have kids doing stuff, making things. What else? What? Math help? 
Study groups, collaboration. It's not cheating adults, right? It's, it's help. It's collaboration. Yep. Availability of the internet. Wow. One more. Choice. Choice. More of it. Voice. 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 Agency. Agency. This, I just led, I led a conversation about student-led discussions a couple weeks ago. The research from the 90s and the two, early 2000s is that uh, students speak about a minute per 60 minutes in our schools. Lower level classrooms, there's like 42 seconds, literally is the data from this particular study. And upper level classes is about three and a half minutes. So on the average, the students talk for one minute per 60 minutes in our schools. Somebody's got to do something about that. I'm sorry, you have one more? Uh, stopping focus on education and focus on learning. Focus on learning, not education. Outstanding, great. So what if we weren't afraid to fail? Very quickly, I want you to watch this trailer for the documentary Underwater Dreams. And if you've seen it, the video already, I'm sorry, but I'm going to use it because it's powerful. And this came out after 10 years after a high school, undocumented uh, students from a Phoenix high school beat MIT and other colleges in the university division of an underwater robot competition. They put out this documentary and it's having great success. So let's take a look. sophisticated underwater robotics competition up against the likes of MIT. When we arrived at the competition, I was pretty nervous. The other robots were like pieces of underwater jewelry. We looked like the carnival had arrived. Just a raggedy ass robot. We were way over our head. We noticed water indicates we're telling it to go forward, the robot's going sideways, and I'm thinking, oh my god, oh shit. Out of the competition. Sorry. We were all having problems. My idea was a tampon. This was a do or die situation. MacGyver would be proud. <laughs> but the robot was only the beginning. Who are these punks? From nowhere. They had no business doing what they do. So what is that? They broke the mold and said, catch me if you can. It wasn't a bomb building a robot. The 2004 team showed us that it was possible. No matter what background you come from or where you are, you can do what you set your mind to do. Kids at Carl Hayden High School become leaders. They have a sense of social responsibility that was cultivated as being part of this team. Knowing you can't do something just because you're lacking a piece of paper is kind of devastating. What the robotics did to me is to show me, even though that I don't know where to start, I can solve the problem. We should empower as many people as we can to build great things. These boys laid a foundation. They inspired those behind them to see that possibilities could exist, to be courageous, to dream, and to fly. I want to solve the energy crisis. Make a difference in my community. Be a computer engineer. Develop the renewable energy infrastructure. Next generation of autonomous vehicles. And make them go faster. Prosthetics for kids. Discover like alien life. I want to be an astronomer. If you haven't had a chance to see that or if you can get a hold of it, uh, it's about a 45-minute documentary about this story, again, of these undocumented students from Phoenix. Uh, I wish some of our politicians would watch it. Oh, that was a shot. Um, because all kids can do great things. So I'm going to leave with, I'm going to get a, stay around and maybe hang out with a session about doing the school different and share a couple examples. But I would just leave you with, don't let it stop you. Whatever it is. Okay. If it's your language, if it's your size, if it's your color, if it's your uh, beliefs about the world, don't let it stop you. If you're not ready, don't let that stop you. Go anyway. If your teacher, school, or district 
may not be ready, don't let that stop you. And I'm not saying walk out and protest. I'm saying take care of your learning needs and make a difference. Leave a legacy. You don't have to wait for somebody to give you permission. If your community isn't ready, don't let that stop you. If the state, nation, or world might not be ready, don't let that stop you. <coughs> Go anyway. And finally, for those of you who want to find the extraterrestrials, if the universe isn't ready, don't let it stop you. There are only limits that we create individually, societally, and I'm saying it's time to break through. You have a fantastic start. I'm hoping by the end of today you've got some action plans and you took a little bit of something away. And again, I'm going to stay around and talk about the Iowa Big School in Cedar Rapids and the Big Picture Learning Company. If somebody wants to know what it, could it look like, I'll share some of that stuff. But thank you for having me and have a fantastic day.